Hey everyone, it is Friday, so that means it is time for another MTG Top 10. This week we'll be looking at my picks for the best budget commander or EDH staples in the color of white. Eventually I'll get around to doing all five of the colors. It won't necessarily be the next four Fridays, but I will get around to doing all of them eventually. For now though, we're looking at white. This list consists of cards that I think fit well into basically any commander deck with white in it and come at a low price. All of them are under $2 on both Magic Online and in paper, and the majority of the cards on this list are actually considerably cheaper than that. So let's go ahead and get started. At number 10, we have Fate's Fetters. In Commander, a card that can affect any permanent is something you usually want, and Fate's Fetters definitely fits the bill there. It can deal with problem planeswalkers, artifacts, enchantments, you name it, assuming they have activated abilities. Obviously, it deals with creatures the best, since it shuts down their ability to attack or block two. That said, it doesn't get any higher than 10, because it doesn't do anything about creatures who have powerful static abilities, something one sees a lot of in Commander. If you put this on Kazador, Ghost Chieftain, for example, you haven't really accomplished anything. Your opponent will just keep bringing creatures back from the graveyard, and the same is true of countless other Commanders. This card still makes it into the top 10 because of its utility, and the gaining of the 4 life isn't irrelevant either. It's also incredibly cheap, so if you want to make a commander deck, get into commander, I recommend getting a Fates Fetters, at least for the early going. You may be able to replace it with a better card later, but Fates Fetters is a great card in commander. Uh, White has some better removal spells that are very cheap and easy to acquire that did bump Fates Fetters all the way down to 10, though, so there are cards that I think are better than it on this very list. So let's move to number 9, and this is where we have Glory. This card could potentially be higher on the list, but I demoted it a little bit because it is not quite every deck that wants glory, just most of them. Not all decks are creature-based, and not all decks can easily put glory in the graveyard. However, once glory is in the graveyard, it is very powerful, especially against monocolored decks, because your opponent can basically do nothing to you at that point. What's more is every time you use Glory's ability, you can choose a new color. So even if your opponent is multicolored, you get to keep on using Glory's abilities against cards of other colors. If you have 15 mana available, which is not impossible in Commander, you can give your creatures protection from all colors. Pretty sweet and an auto-include in most white Commander decks, but it isn't quite as staply as some of the other cards on this list. It's also pretty cheap in, on Magic Online, but a little over a dollar in paper. So we'll move on to number 8, where we have Marshall's Anthem. This is the second appearance of a Marshall's Anthem on an MTG Top 10, as it also made an appearance in my Top 10 Anthems, and it made its appearance there based on the fact that it was a powerful card in Commander, and it definitely is. It has the same limitations Glory has, in that it needs your deck to be creature-heavy to really shine, but it has a very powerful effect going along with the Anthem. For every 2 mana you pay, you can bring a creature back from your graveyard. It's, you have to pay it when you cast it. It's multi-kicker. But you get to bring a creature back from your graveyard to benefit from the Anthem effect. Unlike most Anthems, this means Marshall's Anthem is even a good top deck when your board is empty, providing you have creatures in your graveyard and the mana to bring them back. So it's definitely a card you want in most white commander decks, but again, if you're somehow a white commander deck that doesn't focus on uh, attacking, it's not as good. But even in decks that aren't super aggressive, bringing back a bomb from your graveyard for six mana and giving it plus one plus one isn't too bad. All right, so at number seven, we have True Conviction. I like Glory. Um, this card is ranked a little lower than it would otherwise be because it is only good in a deck that wants to be attacking the opponent on a regular basis, and not quite all commander decks do that, not even all white ones. But any deck that is aggressive, True Conviction is amazing. It makes it impossible for your opponent to race you, and if you manage to have one of these and a few creatures in play for two turns, you probably aren't going to lose. It makes your commander win with commander damage very easily as well, as Double Strike often does. It does have the minor downside of being triple white, so it really only fits into mono white strategies, but its power level is very high and its price tag is pretty low, so I recommend picking one up for all of your mono white EDH decks. At number 6, we have a card that does fit into any white commander deck and probably should be in any white commander deck, especially if you don't want to fork over cash for Path to Exile or Swords to Plowshares, and that is Journey to Nowhere. I have Journey higher than Fates Fetters, despite Fates Fetters' greater utility, because Journey eliminates creatures for a cheaper cost of 2 mana, and it exiles them, so static effects that are a problem for Fates Fetters are dealt with by Journey. It does have some other weaknesses that Fates Fetters shares, namely weakness to enchantment removal, uh, but like I said, Face Fetters has that problem as well. But the fact it does the job at a lower converted mana cost is great, and it's another very cheap card, although in paper it is close to $1.50, and it's $0.40 cents in Magic Online. Kind of high for a common, but clearly a lot of people are playing it uh, in Commander. So let's move on to number five, which is where we have Return to Dust. Having cards that let you destroy either artifacts and enchantments is important in Commander, as you are likely to encounter problematic artifacts and enchantments in many games. Having a card that lets you get a two-for-one and gives you the flexibility to choose between destroying an artifact or enchantment is even better. 
Return to Dust should be in every white, at least mono white, commander deck that there is because of its flexibility and the value it gives you. It is almost never right to cast it outside of one of your main phases just because being able to destroy two things is what makes this card so good. Otherwise, it may as well just be disenchant, but it's nice it still has the flexibility. Say there's some situation that emerges where you have to immediately destroy an artifact that your opponent has, you're going to lose the game, and you can do that on their turn if you need to. But yeah, this is a card that I can see no reason to leave out of your white EDH decks. It is cheap, and it is strong in a format filled with mana rocks and powerful enchantments. At number four, we have a card that should not only be an auto-clued in any mono-white commander deck, but any commander deck with white in their color identity. Why? Well, because the Eternal Dragon here has plain cycling, meaning that he can help you fix by grabbing you your Temple Garden or Hallowed Fountain. He does something important at all stages of the game, in fact. He can fix you or make sure you hit a land drop in the early going of the game, and in the later game, he can come out of your graveyard as a threat. Eternal Dragon is also super cheap, so I'd advise picking one up if you want to play EDH at all, since it fits into so many different EDH decks. At number three, we have what is the newest card in our list, and I think it's one that's been overlooked, and that is End Hostilities. Board Sweepers are important in Commander, as they help you salvage otherwise unwinnable situations, and they can sometimes give you something ridiculous, like a 10 for 1. Don't want to shell out big money for Wrath of God? Well, In Hostilities does a pretty good impression of Wrath, and in fact, it has a little bit of upside that Wrath doesn't. Voltron strategies are pretty popular in EDH. These are strategies where a player finds as many powerful equipment as they can and attaches it to their commander, and in hostilities is great for those situations. With Wrath, even if you blow up the board, your opponent gets to hold on to their Sword of Fire and Ice or their Sword of Body and Mind or their Umazawa Jite. Not so with in hostilities, and it is far cheaper, not in mana cost, but in, in actual dollars. Uh, don't get me wrong, Wrath is better since it costs one mana less and prevents regeneration, but in hostilities has some upside, and I think it is being overlooked in commander right now as i said i recommend picking one up soon as they probably won't ever be cheaper than they are now as people i think will start running them more often in commander uh because of all the voltron strategies that are around so let's move on to number two uh here i cheated a little bit and decided to go with two cards both banishing light and oblivion ring I think any white deck should probably make an effort to include both of these cards because they are powerful removal spells. They basically combine the utility of Faith's Fetters with the more powerful effect of Journey to Nowhere to be the best flexible removal spell in the color of white, and they're both pretty easy to obtain at very low cost. They aren't exactly the same card, it is worth noting. One can abuse Oblivion's rings, Oblivion Ring's two separate triggers by playing the ring to kill something and then sacrifice the ring in response to the trigger, and that way the creature that has been exiled or the permanent that has been exiled never gets to come back. Banishing Light can't do that because it doesn't actually have two separate triggers. It only has one. But that's okay as that doesn't really come up all that often in Commander. But these two cards are great. They're very easy to obtain. Uh, they should basically be in any Commander deck. They are weak to enchantment removal, of course, but that's a problem with a lot of removal in white. And uh, Banishing Light and Oblivion Ring are, are still strong. You know, they're not perfect at everything, but for their cost, you should definitely have them both in your commander decks and they're because they're such budget cards so what's number one well at number one i have a chroma's vengeance i said that wrath effects were powerful and they are but what's more powerful effects that destroy multiple types of permanence austere command is obviously the best version of this but it's pretty expensive in paper where a chroma's vengeance is not vengeance destroys three types of permanence that are very common in edh and it does so for only two more mana than wrath it does of course have the downside of destroying your own permanence just as wrath does but if you have to cast a Chroma's Vengeance, it probably means you were really behind on the board anyway. The Vengeance is basically a reset button in a greater way than Wrath of God is because it eliminates all the key permanent types except for Planeswalkers as this card was unfortunately printed before they ever existed. So it really gives you a slow, it really gives you a chance to get back in a game that you fell behind on, especially if you slow roll the Vengeance and let your opponent unload their hand. What's more, if you're in some sort of strange situation where you don't want to vengeance and need to draw into something else, it even has cycling, though I don't think it's right to cycle it most of the time. Well, that does it for this week's top 10. As I said, over the next few months, I will get around to doing the other four colors as well. I'll try to be doing topical top 10 lists uh, most of the time, but when I can't really think of a topic, I'll basically continue to address these these lists of the top 10 uh, budget cards in each color. Uh, So if you want to make Make sure you see those and my other MTG Top 10s and my other content in general and aren't already a subscriber. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for cards that should make this list as well. Thanks for watching.